Today I got a Pulsar TV. This was a small CRT TV house brand for Canadian Tire. This one's totally dead. Made by Daewoo. Hopefully we'll be able to get this one going. Not letting the cat out of the bag just yet. Let's see what's wrong with it. This little TV came in from a client who uses it for uh, retro gaming. Apparently it's dead and it went up with a puff of smoke. So before we even try to power it up, let's pull it back off and see if there's anything obvious. This failed. So this set, April 1987, is made by Daewoo, made in Korea. The Daewoo, LG, and Samsung were the big three over there. First things first, let's clean out all the dust. Let's check for blown fuses. That generally gives you an idea where to start looking. So the AC fuse here is not blown. How about the DC fuse over here? The DC fuse is open. Therefore, we can assume that something shorted in the power supply or the vertical or horizontal circuit. So we'll remove the DC fuse. And it's not blown real black, which is generally a good sign that uh, it may not be a catastrophic failure. First thing we need to check on this is we need to check the horizontal output transistor. Because if there's a failure in like the flyback area, that could burn out the horizontal output transistor and uh, that would blow the fuse. But let's check that first. So we'll turn the TV on its side. We'll just take a look at the circuit board and we'll check that horizontal output transistor which is right down here on the bottom. I just want to make sure that I'm not going to put any strain on the CRT from the chassis hanging over the side here. Okay, so first things, some light. Horizontal output transistor is right down here. We're going to measure it, see if there's any shorts on the uh, the transistor. So I'm going to measure it in circuit for emitter to base, or sorry, emitter to collector. See if there's a short, and it's not a short. That's good. That's a good sign. The output transistor is not shorted. How about how about collector to base? And oh, let help if I'm in diode test mode. So we're not shorted. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. I'm going to uh, inspect for bad solder connections and uh, we'll resolder any of the ones that look like they may be problematic, especially around the horizontal drive transformer. And then we'll put a new fuse in it and we'll bring it up slowly on the variac and see whether anything happens limiting the current. So I'm resoldering some of the connections on the horizontal drive transformer because they have a, a, a tendency to fail and cause usually they blow the output transistor but we're going to go over those we're also going to go over some down in the uh, the power circuit some of the dropping resistors that are used to drop the voltage down for different circuits. In these sets, a lot of times they just use the resistor and then a zener diode to regulate low voltage supplies. And they usually would put a pretty big resistor, like a two or three watt resistor. And they'd get hot because they were dropping a fair bit of current. And when they get hot, they tended to uh, make this, make, well, you can see in the middle of the board there, the, the solder looks kind of... Uh, dull so we'll go over a few of those I don't think that's where the problem is but uh, it's always a good idea to touch up anything on the board that looks like it's been uh, running a bit warm so when I do fire this up I'll probably plug it into my 100 watt uh, light bulb which will limit the current draw to 1 amp just so that if something is shorting out I won't blow a fuse and it won't do any more further damage. Because when you get into a, a TV like this, you don't know what, what caused the fault, right? You don't know why it went dead. It, it still could be a, a bad flyback, right? It could be a diode that's gone bad in the flyback, but typically when the flyback goes, and if the flyback's gone on this thing, it's, it's a write-off. You're not fixing it. Because you're never going to get a flyback for a TV like this. You wouldn't have been able to get a flyback for a TV like this 20 years ago. Never mind now.
even when this TV was only a couple years old, if a flyback transformer failed, it would have been a throwaway because at the time this was not a high-end set. Although all these old TVs today, because so many people threw their CRT TVs in the garbage, there's not a lot of them around anymore. And uh, there are people, as I say, that, that use these ga for, for gaming, for retro gaming, because you can't play the old games, like the old Nintendos and so forth, they're just unplayable on a flat panel TV because of the lag, the delay from the time the video signal is received until it's actually displayed on the screen. You don't have time to respond. All the old games were written for line by line raster and you, you have to have a device that displays line by line raster and the only device that does that is a CRT monitor te television. So they can't be played on anything modern so I advise people that have got old CRT TVs like I got a few of them here I got a couple I got a couple small ones that I'm hanging on to and even some larger ones and I, I've got one running right now that I use to display my security cameras on but I don't leave it running if I'm not you know working in the shop here I basically just have it on so that if the door is closed well even if the door is open I can't see out front because there's stuff blocking my my line of sight out front but if I'm working in here and the door is closed I like to be able to look and see if there's somebody at the door you know or see what's going on in the front yard so I glance over at my 20 inch RCA 2006 RCA I got one of the last ones I think I got the last one they had at the local Walmart when I picked it up and they were giving me strange looks and I bought a CRT TV when you know, it was the last of the line. They had nothing. It was the last one they had. And uh, I think they had two of them, and I should have bought the second one. It was like, and I, I kid you not, it was a 21-inch uh, you know, CRT, flat square tube, and I think I paid $39 for it brand new. I should have bought that. They had two of them in there. I should have bought both of them. But I bought it just as a, as, as a monitor for my security cameras, and I've been using it. Well, since, since 2006. Got a new fuse in the unit. We're going to plug it into my Variac and my uh, dim bulb. So I'm going to turn the power down on the Variac down to zero. I'll plug it into the dim bulb as well. And we'll bring this up slowly and see what it does. Okay, the power switch is on. And we'll start to bring up the Variac. I can hear the oscillator running, so we're not drawing much current. We're not going to draw enough current to burn anything else, else out. If we look at the the uh, horizontal output, when I turn on the set, kick on the power, you see we got horizontal output, but it's really it's it's got this double pulse. Like there's a probably a diode that's shorted. Hope it's not internal to the flyback probably one of the secondary diodes is shorted on the uh, that derives one of the voltages like say for the vertical output but we definitely our horizontal is working as we can see I am getting some vertical drive to the yoke so the vertical circuit is operational I'm gonna try powering this thing up on full power Okay. Watch on the left side. Watch. Interesting. Oh, look at that. That looks like a flyback or a yoke. Interesting. What is going on with this? Is it the flyback that's bad? Oh, you know what? It's the yoke. It's the yoke that's bad on this thing. Take a look. It's the yoke. Unfortunately, this set is no good. Watch the yoke. Watch right down here. It's the yoke shot. Damn. That's what's wrong with the set. That's where all that distorted waveform is coming from. I was chasing around looking for a diode that was shorted. It's not. It's the stupid yoke. Ooh, look at the smoke. 
since the yoke is shot, I might as well show you guys where it's shorted, or where it's burned. So we'll take the we'll take the uh, the yoke off. I think the yoke can come off this tube. Some tubes the yoke can come off, others it can't. We'll take off the convergence pack and release the clamp on the tube. I've got the yoke unplugged now. I should be able to just give this a, a turn and it should come right off. And there is the damage right there. So one might wonder what makes the short out. Well, what happens is, and this is the problem on all these old vintage TVs. I can see this becoming more of a problem as these sets are also all very, very old. You'll notice that there's some, looks like green marks here and here and over here. If we look at the rubber spacers that these rest up against, this is what holds the yoke in place. It's right where contact is made between the rubber spacers which have now these used to be at one time these were nice soft rubber they're now hard as a rock the rubber deteriorates and when the rubber deteriorates it forms between uh, there's right where there's contact between the enamel and the rubber just over the years of heating and cooling and if you get a bit of moisture in there like from hum humidity it will eventually break down the insulation. You get a chemical reaction between the enamel on the wire and the rubber. And as the rubber is deteriorating, it's off-gassing. And there's probably some, some acids that get released while it's deteriorating anyway. It attacks the winding. The next point, the next point on this one that's going to fail is right here, where you'll see some more deterioration. But that's what uh, typically caused the yolks to fail. Now, when when color televisions when CRT televisions were still available you could get yokes to repair them and I'm not gonna say that somebody may not have a yoke for this I thought I had one but unfortunately the TV chassis that I had which the, the board was shot but I kept the uh, I kept the, the tube and the the yoke um, in case I ever needed it but I just went to my storage locker to look for it and I guess I threw it out because it was just a tube and a yoke and I figured I'll never ever need this ever in a million years so I disposed of it so unfortunately I don't have one that can make this set work so this one unfortunately is one that is going to be going to the scrap heap but I, I did tell the guy that owned this I said you know I have some CRT TVs and if I can get one that I can make work for you I'll gladly sell it to you so I'm going to go through my uh, my collection of small CRT TVs, and uh, if I find one, I think they work, but well, they might not because they've been sitting for a while. So I'll go through my collection of CRT sets, and uh, if I have one that needs service, I will uh, do a video on it. But this one here, this one is done. I'll just pop that fuse that I put in out because. There's no point leaving a new fuse in the set because it's not going to work. Just kind of put it back together the way it was. I won't even bother to plug the yoke in because there's no point. And we'll close this one off as, unfortunately, this one here cannot be fixed. Wah, wah, wah. Thanks for watching.